Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. Julian here for another waiver wire video. Sorry I'm not in the studio today, guys. I'm still a little bit under the weather, so I didn't want to go to my studio today, but definitely still going to present you a banger of a video. Before we jump into the content today, guys, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and consider going down in the description below and checking out the link to my Patreon if you want to take your support to the next level. I offer some pretty great perks like you being able to DM with me one-on-one, -on -one, and I answer all the questions that you have for me whenever you need. Let's jump into the content now, guys, and let's jump into the schedule for week 19. And as you can see here, guys, on Monday, February 19th, there are 10 games, so pretty busy Monday, Tuesday 8, Wednesday 5, Thursday 11, Friday 3, Saturday 13, and Sunday 7. The off nights are Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, although Sunday is quite busy for an off night with 7 games and 14 teams playing, so check your lineup. Maybe you don't even have room on Sunday. So the only real off nights are Wednesday and Friday, and even then, guys, a lot of the the days of games aren't that busy, so you may even have room on days like Monday and Tuesday as well. So go ahead and check your line of what days you have room for guys, and so you don't necessarily have to be prioritizing off-night players. But if you do have to prioritize off-night players, the teams with the best off-night schedules are Buffalo, Chicago, and Columbus, who play on all three off-nights, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And then the Oilers play on both Wednesday and Friday, which are the two least busy off-nights. Once again, guys, the San Jose Sharks have not a great schedule with only two games. Jumping into some forward options, guys, and first on the list is Nick Suzuki at 70% rostered, and he just squeaks onto this list. He has been the hottest player in the entire NHL. I recently went on various of my pools and went by points for fantasy points wise over the last couple of weeks. Suzuki, then McDavid. That's how good Suzuki has been lately. He's on fire on that line with Caulfield and Uriah Slavkovsky, and he is a must-add right now. I don't care that he's a natural center. He's putting up that many points that he just needs to be added to your rosters. Then I got Brian Russ, who's playing on the top line with Sidney Crosby, and it was Jake Gensel. He's playing top power play even before Jake Gensel got injured. Brian Russ has been absolutely fantastic in that deployment and should continue to put up the points. Definitely a really, really good ad. Should be owned in way over 51% rostered. Then I have Andre Kuzmenko and Jonathan Huberdeau, who both play on the top line and top power play in Calgary, and both have been pretty good lately. Huberdeau, since the calendar turned to 2024, has been playing a lot better. Still not that 110 pace Huberto or anything like that, but he's putting up points a lot more frequently. And Andre Kuzmenko has scored three goals in five games since he's joined the Calgary Flames. So that's pretty good as well. Definitely don't mind him as an ad. And then Victor Arvidsson, the LA King, is playing on the second line and second power play with LA, but the dude tends to shoot the puck a lot. I've only seen one game with him back in the lineup, but definitely a guy who can be a difference maker on your team. He's a little bit of a speculative ad right now, but his deployment isn't bad. Then we got Boone Jenner for those off nights. Columbus plays all three off nights this week, and Boone Jenner is their best player, in my opinion, at least fantasy-wise. Very, very, very good ad here, guys. He's going to give you a pretty safe floor with shots, hits, even some blocks. And if you have face-off wins, even more of those as well. And he's been pretty good lately. Then I have Mason Marchman, who's still playing on that line with Duchesne. And he's doing pretty well as of late and has not slowed down at all. Definitely a solid ad there with Mason Marchman. Next is my man skate must-add player of the video, Uri Slavkovsky. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word FANTASYTIPPED at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word FANTASYTIPPED. Embrace a new you and definitely embrace a new trimmer, courtesy of Manscaped. Now, why is Uri Slavkovsky my Manscaped must-add player of the video? Well, as a Habs fan, it really excites me to say this, but he's absolutely on fire and finally showing why he was picked first overall by the Montreal Canadiens two years ago. 
In the month of February, Yuri Slavkovsky in five games has five goals and four assists on that sizzling hot line with Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield. You definitely do not want to be missing out on grabbing Slavkovsky right now because he could be a season-long hold and could be an excellent add for the rest of the year. Definitely someone you should be adding now if he's still available somehow. Then Adam Henrique, who's playing on the top line with Leo Carlson and Ryan Strom in Anaheim. And the dude has been red hot and is probably going to be traded. So they're trying to show him off right now. And guys, Henrique is definitely someone that I like a lot. He's someone I like all year long. Definitely a guy who's always under the radar. And a guy who's finally being noticed right now. Definitely don't mind him as an ad. He could potentially gain value if he's traded. But we'll have to see who he's traded to before we make that evaluation. Then I have Dakota Joshua here who is injured right now, but shouldn't be anything too serious. He's playing on that third line with Connor Garland as well as Teddy Bluger. And that third line has finally started to, you know, heat up once again in Vancouver. And it's nice to see Dakota Joshua, even when he was cold points wise, the floor that he was putting up was still very, very safe with shots and blocks. So definitely a guy I don't mind adding. Jake Neighbors is someone who started to heat up as of late. He's playing on the second line with Shen and Kapanen as well as Power Play 1. And like I said, he's been doing pretty well lately. He's available in 87% of the league, so definitely not a bad add there. Nikola Hua was my Manscape must-add player of the week last week. And he's been keeping it up, scoring a point just about every single night. I don't know how this guy has not added in more than 13% of leagues, but his deployment is great, and he's putting up the numbers. Kyle Palmieri is playing really well right now for the Islanders, putting up plenty of points, playing top power play, and on the line with Brock Nelson. As long as the guy's hot, I definitely don't mind streaming him in deeper leagues. Connor Garland is another guy who just came off a two-goal game. He's playing on that line with Dakota Joshua and Teddy Bluger. And he's someone that, yeah, he'll go cold for a few games, but then he'll bounce back and score you a whole bunch of points. This may be one of those times where he can score you a whole bunch of points. Anthony Sorelli is playing on that second line with Brandon Hagel as well as Nick Paul. And he's been pretty hot as of late. I included him on this list last week, and he's still hot. So I'm including him again. Then I have Morgan Frost, who's playing on the second line and second power play in Philadelphia. I have him here because he's pretty hot right now, playing with Farabee and Atkinson. And he's putting up points, so as long as he is, definitely don't mind streaming him in a deep league. Then I have Andre Pilat of the New Jersey Devils, who's top line with Heischer and Brat. No power play one, but he is hot. He's got six points in his last six games, so definitely don't mind streaming him while he's hot. Nick Foligno, I have him here for the off nights. Chicago has a great off night schedule this week, and Foligno's probably the most rosterable Blackhawk right now because he puts up a pretty safe floor with shots and hits, and he gets plenty of opportunity to put up points as well. Coming off an injury here, he's definitely the guy I would go for if I'm going to stream a Chicago Blackhawk this week. Then Tommy Novak of the Nashville Predators is insanely hot right now. He's got like a six-game point streak or something like that going, scoring a whole bunch of goals, and nobody is noticing him. He's only 2% rostered, and nobody's adding him. I don't understand why he's playing on the second line, and he is one of the most underrated players in the entire NHL. Definitely someone who merits being added in more leagues. And if he starts getting noticed, he might get that left wing eligibility added as well. Finally, Kyle Uppost is a guy who I would add for the off nights as well. Buffalo has a really great off night schedule this week. They play Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And he's playing on the top line right now with Tage Thompson as well as the top power play. I know Tage Thompson hasn't been that great lately, but Ocposo has. Jumping into defenseman, Thomas Shabbat leads the pack here. He's 66% rostered, playing on the top Ottawa power play. And he's definitely a guy who will give you a pretty safe floor. He's going to put up points fairly frequently. Definitely not a bad ad there. Same thing with Wierenski. He's top power play in Columbus. And he's a guy who deserves to be more than 63% rostered. A great defenseman. Should put up plenty of points. Hannafin right now is a guy who's really hot and cold. He'll go for a whole bunch of games without doing a thing, and then he'll go a whole bunch of games where he puts up a point. Right now he's on one of his hot streaks, and they're giving him top power play time at the moment in Calgary. He's definitely not a bad streamer right now. Thomas Harley at 61% rostered has been phenomenal this year. I absolutely love this guy, and he's doing it all without even any top power play time. You love to see it, and he is someone that I love adding right now. Colton Pareko is someone who's putting up plenty of great peripherals right now, and if he keeps it up, guys, he's definitely someone you keep in your lineup 
and you don't even think about because he's putting up a safe floor for you night in and night out and you don't have to worry about him. Tory Krug is an interesting one. I'm including him here because he had a five assist night just three games ago then followed it up with no points and then followed that up with a goal and an assist. So seven points in his last three games. I had to, you know, give him a mention here. He's someone who's incredibly streaky though. And while he does get power play one in St. Louis, he's not consistent. So if you're in a deep league and there's not really any other better defenseman available, definitely take a shot at Krug. But if there's some, you know, better defensemen like ones I already mentioned that are available, I would go for those guys over Tory Krug. Jonas Brodeen is playing some pretty incredible minutes right now in Minnesota. He's got six points in his last seven games with some pretty good peripherals as well. Getting PP2 and guys, you got to ride the hot streak right now. He's getting those massive minutes, and as long as he's hot, you might as well stream him. As soon as he starts to cool down, though, I drop him. He's not really an offensive defenseman. Eric Chernak is a guy who just came back from injury and is putting up some great peripherals and is available in 98% of leagues, so categories league or really deep points leagues where, you know, those kind of peripherals get you some points. He's not a bad streamer there. And then Simon Benoit, he's a peripherals guy, mostly for hits. Uh, some blocks, some shots as well. For categories league, mainly. He's available in 99% of the league, so if you need some of those categories, he's definitely not a bad streamer. And finally, Daniil Miromanov of the Vegas Golden Knights. They're giving him a shot at the top power play right now in Vegas. So if you're in a super deep league and you're super desperate for a defenseman to put up some offensive stats, Miromanov might not be the worst idea in the world. Jump into goalies quickly, and Lyon is the starter in Detroit and should continue to get the starts. Kachekov's the starter in Carolina, so... You know, expecting to get majority of the starts over there. Corpus Allo, same thing. He's actually starting to play really well, which is nice to see because he hadn't been that great earlier in the season. But he's their starter over there. Uko Peck of Lukanen is the starter in Buffalo. He's someone that he's been really, really great this year and just could continue to get almost every start for Buffalo because Levi's still in the AHL, so you don't have to worry about that kind of competition there. And Samuel Urson of the Philadelphia Flyers is their starter in Philadelphia with Carter Hart probably not playing again this year or maybe ever. Urson is their guy in Philly. John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks is an option in Anaheim. Keep in mind, he just got injured again, actually. Be right before I'm recording this, I heard that Gibson is gonna be out for a little bit. So Lucas Destel might be a guy that you wanna be adding right now if you are a Gibson owner. And Lucas Destel will get the starts until John Gibson comes back from injury. Peter Mrazek has been one of the best goalies in the entire NHL, and he's on the Blackhawks. That's very, very impressive. Obviously, he's not getting a whole lot of wins, but the numbers he's putting up are pretty good, so good for points. Leagues, Karel Vamelka of the Arizona Coyotes is going to be their starter for at least a week. Ingram's out for 7 to 10 days, so Vamelka is definitely someone you should be adding if you're an Ingram owner or you just need a goalie for a week or two. Vamelka is definitely a decent option and should get all the starts for Arizona. Nico Dawes is playing phenomenally for New Jersey right now. He's gotten three starts in a row now, played very, very well all three of those starts, and should continue to get the starts for New Jersey because... He's the one who's playing better hockey right now. And finally, is it Dustin Wolf time in Calgary? Because it looks like Markstrom's on his way out the door at the trade deadline. And Vlader is currently on IR. So Dustin Wolf, he's someone that you might want to add right now, even just to stash, because he's going to be a starting goalie in all likelihood uh, for the Calgary Flames. So that's definitely something that could be very, very exciting. Obviously, didn't look very promising uh, the other night against the San Jose Sharks, letting in six goals against the terrible Sharks team. But that's just one game, guys. You never know. And I think Dustin Wolf season might be coming. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed the content today, please drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tech.